My name is Alex Dorgen. I'm an Ansible specialist, and I'm going to be walking through using event-driven Ansible Splunk, so you can use that as an event source for some of your event-driven automation. So why would I want to leverage event-driven Ansible Splunk as a event source? So it is a fully supported application that's available within Splunk, so it's easy to install and configure, and it's fully supported by Red Hat. I did add in a keynote that it's only supported as of July 11th on three versions. Don't be like me and ignore that compatibility portion of the application and try to install it on an old version of Splunk. It will not work. Similar to a lot of the other event to Ansible integrations, you only have to configure that integration once. So whether it's setting up to talk to a Kafka messaging topic or setting up to point to a specific event stream, including token authentication, so I know it's coming from a valid source, I only need to set up that integration once. Then I can leverage it with any existing Splunk search or alert that you've already created using the Splunk IT service intelligence, whether it's an ad hoc command or as part of a larger action rule. And you can also leverage it with the Splunk enterprise security for an adaptive response action. So you do have a lot of flexibility based on how you're leveraging Splunk within your environment. And then just like any other Ansible rulebook, I can have that call an existing job plan for a workflow which can include updating a ticket in something like ServiceNow, notifying personnel via Slack or Teams to ensure everyone is up to date. If you already have those pieces integrated with something like ServiceNow, I could obviously use that as the trigger point, but in this case, I'm going to specifically leverage Splunk as that event source. So I have a very basic rulebook set up. In this case, I'm just using the search capability, so I'm not diving into enterprise security or the uh, service intelligence tool. But this is a very basic rulebook that I have set up that's just looking for a user being added. So in my case, I want to immediately respond to a security event where a local user has been created and I want to delete that user. So I'm getting the virtual machine that the event is being created on, the user that was created so I can only delete that user. And then I want the full log event so I can add that into a service ticket so I know exactly what's going on. But I'll show how I got that information in just a second. The architecture is fairly straightforward, so I could use Ansible to configure log forwarders or any other integrations that you need on the individual hosts, whether it's Linux, whether it's Windows. Obviously, then those logs will get streamed into Splunk itself and become available for whatever actions you have set up. You may already have searches and alerts created. You just may not have the action portion of that to trigger into event-driven Ansible, which is what you can configure with this new add-on. Once that's done, I can trigger a job template or workflow, whether it's a brand new job template or workflow or one that you're already leveraging to respond to these actions. And that can notify chats, update tickets, and obviously run the remediation on those end systems once you're comfortable with this. If you're not using the AI ops capability of Splunk, you may want to leverage your own internal AI. So you can do that as part of this process to enrich some of the ticket information to create your own playbooks, depending on what your comfort level is with AI at this point. But let's jump into a demonstration and show how this can get configured, and then actually a demonstration of that local user being created. So jumping into the demonstration, the first place I'm going to start off is Splunk. So I'll need to make sure that I have that event-driven Ansible add-on already installed. If you don't, inside Splunk, you can go to find more apps and search for event-driven. So the Red Hat event-driven Ansible add-on for Splunk is the one that you want or you can go to Splunk base and you can also see the app here. So also key point to notice, check the compatibility, make sure you're on the correct version of Splunk for this particular application. And if you go to the details section, it does give you links to a doc that walks through setting up the application. So it'll walk through configuring whether you're using a webhook as the connection or if you're setting up for Kafka, it walks through that. It also has a description that walks through setting up the ITSI custom action which I'm not going to walk through today. I'm going to walk through the search capability so you can see how that might work. So going back into Splunk, I'm going to go into the event-driven Ansible add-on. Once it's installed, you'll see I already have a integration selected, but I'm just going to temporarily create a new one, call it you know, EDA Shadowman, leverage the webhook or Kafka type, give it a unique name for the environment. So especially if you have more than one event-driven Ansible environment, maybe for cloud versus on-prem, dev, test, or prod, give it something reasonable. So maybe I've got a test environment set up with event-driven Ansible. And then the next key pieces are the webhook endpoint and the webhook auth type. 
if you're using an event stream, you have to have an auth type. So I would generally recommend using an API key because it's always more secure than basic auth. So I'll show how that process works. So now I have to do the integration inside the automation platform. So first thing is I'll need to create a credential for that event stream because it is a requirement in order to actually create one. So since we already saw that I'm using a, a token for an API tokens, so I can assign this to whatever organization I want and it will be of type token. Authorization is the correct header and then I just need to generate a token. So it won't auto generate for you. Splunk won't auto generate it for you. So you can use something like Bitwarden to generate a random password. You can use really any password generator for this to work, but then I'd paste that in here as well as in the configuration for Splunk itself. The next step after you've created the credential is to create the event stream. Since I already have one running, I'm not going to save this, but then you would create the event stream of type token, pick the Splunk credential that you just created, don't adjust the headers, and I would recommend leaving the forward events to rulebook action section blank, and I'll show why in a second. But then just name, name this Splunk, assign it to an organization, disable, and then click create event stream. You'll then get, once you click save, it will give you an event stream URL, which again, I've already got one created. So I can just copy this event stream URL and paste that into the webbook endpoint section. You may want to verify hosting for SSL verification, and then you can add in a connection timeout or connection retries. I left these all default, so I didn't need to go through that process, but this is all that's necessary to set up that integration. And really once you do that once, you're then free to do this for as many alerts, as many security events as you want. So since I already have this set up, I'm just gonna click cancel and I'm gonna leverage my existing one. But as I talked about, you may not know what the event payload looks like. So it's difficult to create a rule book if I don't know what to set up for conditions. So I'm going to disable my current event stream, and then I'm going to create a search of what I care about. So as I talked about before, one of the things I care about is a user being added. So I'm copying and pasting this, but I already have a index set up in Splunk for rel logs, and I know that the process that I care about is a user being added, and that it's got some sort of user ID. So this can be my search, and then all I would do is set up an alert based on that search. So I can do save as alert. And this is where you actually set up that alert and integration with event-driven Ansible. So give it whatever title you want. So maybe rel local user created, whatever permissions that you want for that application. This is where you set up the alert type. So I will also include in the de description down below the Splunk docs for setting up alerts, which will walk you through the alerting workflow, getting started and talks about the differences between scheduled and real-time alerts, the throttling and all those basic ideas. So that's part of what the setup is. So if I wanted to check every, maybe every day at two o'clock to see how many results were, you know, over a hundred. So maybe I had a hundred local user ads, then I want to take action. In my case, this is a security event. So I want this to be real-time. The expires is just for the alerting page to tell you all right, the alert's been taken care of, but this doesn't impact the actual webhook itself. And then once again, I can either do this immediately per result, or I can do this over a rolling window of time. So check to make sure a login was failed five times across 10 minutes for the same user, something like that. You can throttle it if you want to make sure you don't overload if you know that you're gonna get a certain number of inputs. So I'm not triggering automation regularly. And then you just want to add an action. So this is where, depending on what type of alert you're using. So I'm going to use the Ansible action because this is a saved search. There is also one for the enterprise security from Splunk and as well as the ITSI that I talked about before. But then you can just pick that Ansible action. I've got webhook set up, but this is where you pick webhook or Kafka. Pick that environment that you created before. I created mine called prod. And then you have the option to send all results. So no just means only send that first line, or I can send a batch of results either in plain text or compressed and include the total number of results to send. That's it. Once that's saved, it'll show up in your alerts. And you can see that you now have that alert set up, ready to go. 
I've got mine set up for that search that I showed before, and it's set up as a real-time per result action. So now if I get an alert that meets that particular search, it will trigger the webhook to send to event-driven Ansible. So since I don't know what that payload is going to look like, I again have this forward event server book action activation disabled, and I am going to trigger that alert. So I'm going to do a user add of just a generic user Alex. And if I go back into event driven Ansible, I can already see I received an event right now because it is 1033 uh, AM. And if I scroll down, I can see the headers that were received as well as the body of the payload. So I can see everything that got sent from Splunk and I can decide for me what events are important. So maybe I want the full log output because this is what I want to attach to my service ticket in ServiceNow. I may want to know what host this happened on and I may want to know the user so I can delete that particular user. This gives you an easy way to get started to say, all right, so body conveniently enough is event.payload and then I can look through here and see results because that's the heading here. And then it'll be each individual piece. So it'll be results.host, results.name, and results.underscore raw to get those logs. And as you can see, that's what I'm using for these particular pieces. And also I've got the process being user add, so I can use that again as a trigger. So this is a much easier way personally than creating a rulebook activation that says event.meta is defined. I don't have to have a rule book at all created for this to work. But once I've got this rule book created, I can then save it to a repository and then I can go A, enable this back to forward events. And then I can create a rule book activation and call this Splunk EDA, assign to an organization, pick a project to pull from, find that Splunk rule book that I created. And then I want to attach it to that event stream. This will ensure that any events from Splunk that are going to that event stream get routed to this rulebook activation that I've set up. Then I can assign a credential. In my case, I just need an automation platform credential, so it'll launch a job template that I have in the back end. Pick a decision environment. Since I'm just using the generic ones, you could use the default decision environment provided by Red Hat or your own custom one. Pick a restart policy. If for some reason the server goes down or there's an error, and you can pick the log level. Generally, I leave it on error because I've already done the troubleshooting and testing, but you can adjust this if you're unsure of things that work, and then that's it. So I can just click Create Role Book Activation. That will then start it running and have it waiting for events that get sent to that event stream. So as you can see, I've got quite a large number of rulebook activations running, but I have a Splunk one that is already attached to my Splunk event stream. So I do have this set up to already run an existing job template called remove local user. So if I go back into my controller environment, I have an existing job template set for remove local user. This is already connected to a repository, already connected to a playbook, already has the appropriate credentials for ServiceNow and for my chat and all those various pieces. So now that I've got it properly established again, I've got everything up and running from the rulebook activation and event stream perspective, I'm now actually going to trigger an event and see what happens. So rather than doing a user out of Alex, I'll do a user out of Bob. And I can see obviously that there are folders that have been created for Alex and Bob, but what's going to happen is if I go back into event driven Ansible and I go into rulebook activations, I can either see from the history here if you've got the debug or anything enabled, I don't have any errors, so I won't see it here. But if I go into Rule Audit, once the event completes, I'll be able to see it here that says, hey, a particular event was triggered, and here was the exact job template that was called. So I can see that just popped up. So I can see, once again, the event itself, which is exactly what I saw when I disabled that event forwarding. And this links to a job template. This job template I can see, logged into just that server, created an incident in ServiceNow, sent a notification via Mattermost, and then actually removed the user and deleted some folders. So if I go back in, I can see that that Bob folder is gone. 
And if I want to go into something like Mattermost, which is what my chat program is, I can see that I have a message with, hey, a local user was created with that log event and a direct link into the incident that was created. This will open up and include the fact that, yep, this is that exact log event that was created. And I've added in some extra information for the VM, the IP address, the operating system, because that service now that ITSM collection can update all kinds of events. And I've already closed this out because I've removed that local user. And I added in a note that said, yes, this local user was removed. So I have a very basic playbook that's doing all that for the actual removal of the user, which is just taking that username that I got from Splunk passed in via event-driven Ansible. So this, once again, ensures that I'm only impacting that one VM and that one user as part of this remediation process. So this opens up all kinds of avenues where I can create as many different alerts as I want, create as many different rules then as I want to respond to the various conditions, and then call job templates or workflow job templates that you've created to respond to the various events. So this gives you a ton of flexibility based on alerts and other pieces that you've already set up within Splunk. As discussed, I will include in the description down below the link to Splunk Base so you can get access to the event to Ansible application. I'll also include that link to the doc that walks through setting up the integration, setting up the various pieces for whether it's ITSI, Splunk ES, or just doing a generic search to make sure those that can trigger the docs for the alert manual. So if you don't have alerts configured within Splunk, it'll walk you through that process. And then I'll also link directly to my event-driven Ansible rulebook so you can just see a basic one and how that might work. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about how event-driven Ansible and Splunk can work together to streamline some of your IT operations. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.